boy. Look at those pretty eyes. They're like blue right now. Good morning, big boy. How are you? Good boy. Yeah, I'm gonna nip on my finger. Don't do that. Your bite is too strong. Good sheep. Yeah. Happy sheep. Boy, you are so silly. JC's back there, slept in the back, back of this property, along the border of my friend's property. In here, this ram line is so cute. You were so cute. You're such a good boy. Good sheep. Yeah. Good sheep. All right. I want to update people on my wagon. I'm pimping out my wagon. I have a friend now in Washington, in Omar, who's a freaking artist. He made my three new bedboards. This middle one it separates. Locks and turns into a table. Yeah, I've got a table. <laughs> I got a table in here. How cool is this? Ridiculous. Breaks down so easily. How cool is that? <laughs> he's not only a like a woodworking artist, but he's a like a painting artist too. And he spray painted the bottoms, uh, bottom sides of each of them with leaves, with a leaf stencil. Super cool. Thank you, Omar. Omar also hooked up these lights. <laughs> How cool is that? He wired in these little fairy lights, he calls them, and um, connected them to a little, a little dimmer, and then a USB port so I can plug it into my, my external battery pack, and I can have like all night light. Omar even made like this little controller box look all like steampunk or rustic or something. It's hilarious, but yeah. Just plug it in and I'm able to dim or brighten all these lights. How cool is that? So cool. Thank you, Omar. So yeah, this is um this is my new bedboard uh slash table for two setup. <laughs> it's so cool. They didn't have any uh, cushions anywhere on the internet that were the 24 inch wide by like 30 inches long it, it, nowhere so um, I began making my own <laughs> mattress pads Got these three made up this is actually thicker and more comfortable than these 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 actually squish down <laughs> to be like a quarter of an inch when you put weight on them. But these, you can put your whole body weight on them and they're not gonna get past an, an inch. These are way thicker, three of these. I actually have to uh, sleep um, right now with just two of them in between here because they are noticeably taller than these. So as soon as I make one more of these, then I'll use that third one and the new one to uh, replace this cushion down here and then I will work on making two more to replace this cushion right here and then I will have a completely wool sleeping setup because my friend gifted me one of his wool sleeping bags from his wool sleeping bag company it's so freaking luxurious it's ridiculous um, so breathable um, you're able to breathe in the sleeping bag 
no condensation um, builds up because uh, wool is breathable, but yet insulative. So yeah, I'll have a I'll have a felted wool mattress and and a a wool uh, sleeping bag. So the other cool thing, the other new cool thing about that wagon is I got a stove. I got a stove, a wood stove in for this winter and this winter it's not the uh, <laughs> the DIY mailbox um, that I had last winter. It um, uh, <laughs> the, the mailbox wood stoves are not practical. Um, mailbox are made out of such thin metal that they can't practically and efficiently be welded. There's natural gaps in a a mailbox that you would need to weld shut in order for it to be an efficient enough mailbox to really use and want to use. And those gaps, when you weld them, um, because it's such thin metal, will actually stress out and make brittle the areas of the mailbox housing around immediately around where you, where you weld it it'll make it actually more brittle so that then when it when it uh, heats up and cools down and flexes and and shifts uh, shifts around it'll end up uh, cracking and breaking um, in that brittle area where um, where you try to weld it together so mailbox stove um, uh, was was the, the only idea I could come up with in the five years or so that I've been concentrating on um, a DIY um, like the ideal DIY wood stove and um, it's not practical um, there's gonna be some things that are more practical to do DIY like the evaporative cooler made out of felted wool there isn't anything on the market like that there literally isn't anything evaporative cooler m marketed <laughs> so um, then there's other things that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go the consumer route and if you're gonna go that route go the most quality route that w the item will last you a whole lifetime so the selection of consumer stoves that I was limited to um, was pretty narrow it was like 12 or 15 stoves um, I can only use stoves that have a rear exit stove um, pipe, a chimney. So it's coming out of the back instead of out of the top so that it can go around my, my bed board here. This year I am routing the entire chimney across the roof, across the ceiling, and out the back. So it's super efficient. It's really, really amazing. Um, this is uh, a much bigger wood stove than the mailbox stove that I had last year, last winter. It's much more airtight. It's very airtight. Yeah, it's actually very impressive. Um, this thing can hold coals for a whole eight hours overnight. Um, you just need to feed it once a night in order to, to keep it going. I just pull my legs up um, to uh, uh, be able to pull up the uh, that this uh, foot bedboard, and I just lean forward and uh, feed the log that I have ready, and then I go back to bed. And in the morning, there's still plenty enough coals that I can feed it another log, and it continues to go. Um, it's 18 in over 18 inches long. Um, regular logs are cut to 16 inches long. Uh, the door is exceptionally. Uh, large, most of these uh, camping wood stoves had a really small doorway. This one, the doorway is almost the entire end of the stove. Um, so yeah, I really like this and it's got a window on it, that's really cool. Um, really nice for being able to monitor. Monitor and um, it's got a foo on the back the chimney and um, it like I said it's got a very airtight um, air intake this is um, the Lux XL L U X E it's one of the most expensive camp stoves on the market but um, again um, I was limited to um, only a dozen or so uh, different options and 
I have gotten a lot of support from subscribers lately and they oftentimes will note in their donations or um, when they sign up uh, on the Patreon that they uh, want to support this or that within uh, what I'm doing and specifically a wood stove there was a couple donations of people wanting um, uh, their money to be used uh, towards uh, buying uh, my nice wood stove for this winter. Um, I think the second runner-up is uh, for a solar panel. There's been a couple of donations for people, um, from people for me to get a, uh, a new solar panel um, because I haven't had one since last summer when the, that goal zero just stopped working. So um, I need something to stay charged uh, for these recordings and my audio-visual um, recording and protection, legal protection things. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to work out how to um, how to get a solar panel on this little wagon because that's kind of confusing. Homeboy Omar here is, uh, like I said, he's an electrician. He, he, um, uh, he's a hobbyist electrician, so he is, uh, he's very knowledgeable in the solar panels, so he is uh, helping me figure that out, which one to get. I really appreciate everyone's support um, in the last month or two since Kristen did that video, and I'm finally now getting some uh, um, some help. So yeah, this is how you can put a wood stove in a wagon that is just big enough for you to sleep in. All you need to do is get a rear exit stove so that you can go around your bedboards. And then you need a sheet of metal screwed to the bottom of your bedboard to keep it from uh, catching on fire. When my wagon's fully closed up, the door's closed down because it's really extra cold, um, I'm able to, to use my back door still. Move this stuff out of the way. Yeah, this is my new uh, winterizing setup. I got new curtains, new fireproof curtains on the front and on the back. Got this wired up, supported. It's really sturdy at that end. And yeah, I still need to get a new piece of cardboard for here that is a little bit wider so that it goes underneath this metal. And I need to use um, some, my friend's air duct or air conditioning duct tape basically it's like temperature resistant um, so it should be fine it should definitely be fine right here holding this and then uh, along that top figure out how to seal that and then um, I've got magnets um, underneath um, so that I can if it's really windy or really cold now I don't want any draft coming in through there at all even though any draft that's coming through there is going to be heated by the stove um, if I really want to close it off, um, I can um, batten down the bottom of my back, back curtains with magnets. And on the front, I have C-clamps right now to batten down the bottom of my front curtains. Because um, we just had 55 mile, mile an hour um, wind storms a couple nights ago. It was pretty crazy. And um, so on occasion, you're going to need to batten down. Uh, your curtains and so uh, my C clamps are working for the front right now but I think I'm gonna have uh, some screw in uh, buttons uh, on the bottom side of my on the bottom side of my my board right here so that I can wrap these underneath and um, button them button them down that way that probably be the most efficient this is what we're doing Yeah, hopefully all that was in focus. I've been trying to film this. Can you pimp my wagon video for <laughs> the last week or two? It's either too windy or it's out of focus or I get distracted or I don't include everything. So, yeah. It's pretty cool being able to, being able to sit back here and watch 
stick my feet out, warm them up. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you, God. Awesome. No soliciting. Just to remind me, I have to push my views. 